Hello, welcome back to the Lumpy Land Guide to Vulcanverse. Today we are talking about the Vulcan decks, so really I should start saying the Lumpy Land Guide to Vulcan Forged, because more than half my videos are about non-Vulcanverse related things, so why don't we start changing that anyway. Talking about the Vulcan decks today, it is Vulcan Forge's decentralized exchange program for coins for uh, gaming tokens and it's really the first of its kind it's cross chain so you can exchange right now pyr ethereum based coins for the sandbox token coins you can also exchange um on the polygon chain pyr coins for lava coins and it's going to be expanding to the uh, binance smart chain it's going to have a lot more game tokens on it in the near future so let's investigate how to use the vulcan decks okay the first thing you're going to need to do is head to the vulcan decks and that's vulcandex.vulcanforged.com all right once you are on the vulcan decks you are going to be asked to connect your wallet I use a MetaMask wallet to connect my wallet, and I recommend that you use the same. If you don't know how to use MetaMask, there are many tutorials on YouTube on using the MetaMask wallet, so I suggest that you watch one of those first, and then come back to this tutorial on using the DEX. As you can see in the upper right-hand corner of the DEX, there is an area to connect your wallet. Once you do that, you're going to be taken to MetaMask. It will ask for approval to connect your wallet. You're going to need to avoid pop-up blockers on your browser. That causes a lot of trouble with MetaMask sometimes because MetaMask is asking you to do something, but your browser is blocking the MetaMask signal. So make sure you have those turned off, or at least specifically turned off for MetaMask. And get your MetaMask wallet associated with your Vulcan Dex. Once you have that associated, you can choose what network you want to be on the Vulcan Dex. The Vulcan Dex currently uses Ethereum and the Polygon networks, and soon to be the Binance Smart Chain network. And I would imagine soon to be Elysium at some point, it's, it's soon. Um, but you can right now choose between the Polygon and the Ethereum based network. And let's talk about swapping coins on the Vulcan Dex. You can see on the far left side the trade button. Um, if you've got the trade button enabled, you're going to be presented with this swap icon right in front of your face here. The swap icon basically means let's trade coins. You are able to choose what coins you want to trade, as you should be. And each of these coin slot locations has a spot underneath it to choose from the various coins that the Vulcan Dex offers at this point. Once you click on one of those spots, you're going to get the list of the coins that you can choose from to trade. Now on the Polygon network right now, you've got the Matic, you've got Wrapped Ethereum, Lava Coin, PYR Coin, USDC Coin, and uh, Wrapped Matic as well. Wrapped Matic is doing in there. Anyway, so I'm going to exchange Lava and PYR Coins as my uh, example here. When I go ahead and choose my Lava and PYR coins, I can enter an amount that I want to trade, and it gives me the corresponding amount that the Vulcan Dex will offer. In this case, one PYR is going to be worth 97.8721 Lava coins. I have seen that um, ratio go anywhere from 75 Lava for one PYR all the way up to 120 or so Lava for one PYR. So if you are a day trader, you can sit here on the decks and watch them fluctuate and lose money. That's what I do as a day trader. So if you go ahead and decide that this swap is good for you and you click on the swap button, you're going to be presented with this next page here. It is going to tell you again, confirming the swap, one PYR is going to equal 97.8721 lava. That's exactly what you were just looking at. But wait, it says minimum amount received 97.3852 lava. And I don't understand why there's a difference between these two numbers here. They should be the same, right? Well, no, not necessarily. There is a liquidity provider fee. You can see it's a small amount of PYR, very small amount of PYR in this case. 
And there's also this thing called slippage. Slippage tolerance, 0.5% in this case is a standard amount. Slippage is the amount of tolerance difference you are allowing the machine or the, the computer to grant you between the time you estimate your purchase and the time your purchase actually goes through. So it's very possible that the coins will change in ratio in price towards each other between the time you click yes and the time you click go. Once you say yes to all of these things and agree to the terms, you're going to be taken again to MetaMask, where MetaMask will ask you to confirm and it will tell you exactly how much of the coins you're being removed from your MetaMask wallet, including the Matic that you're going to need in your MetaMask wallet to provide for some gasoline for this transaction to happen. So that's exactly all you need to do for swapping in the Vulcan Dex. If you want to provide liquidity in the Vulcan Dex, you can go back to the home page and on the trade button again, you're going to hit the liquidity button that's right next to the swap button. The liquidity button brings you to a different sl splash page. The liquidity button splash page offers a slightly different um, input here. You've got, again, to choose what liquidity you're going to offer to the Vulcan DEX. Okay, when you're providing liquidity, you're doing so with a pair of tokens, not a single token. You can go to the liquidity page and you can select the two tokens that you would like to provide liquidity for. It's the same list as the tokens that you can swap for. No surprise there. Once you have the two tokens that you are providing liquidity on both sides for, you can find out exactly how much of each you'll need to provide by entering the amount on one side of the equation. In this graphic, you can see that to enter 300 MATIC tokens, I would need to also deposit 38 0.6369 PYR tokens. The reason is such is because when you are doing this, those two tokens financially equal each other. That is the rate of exchange. So you are providing an equal financial amount on both sides. In when you do so, the Vulcan Dex will provide you with a percentage of the share of the pool that you are providing in relation to all the other coins in the Vulcan Dex. In this case, for this example, you can see it is 0.09% of the entire pool of liquidity that is inside the Vulcan Dex that I am going to be providing. That would indicate how much of the fees I would be receiving for the volume of the transaction on this liquidity pair. It offers you exactly what the ratio of the coin per coin is. In this case, I'm not going to go through all those decimal points, but you can see exactly how much PYR per Matic and how much Matic per PYR in this case. And when you do click on the approve button, the Vulcan Dex's next stage is going to show you exactly how many of the pool tokens you're going to receive when you make this transaction. Now this is a little bit tricky for some people. When you put both of your tokens into the liquidity pool, the Vulcan Dex offers you liquidity tokens in exchange. The liquidity tokens represent how much liquidity you have inside the pool. The liquidity tokens have their own contract address. They could be stored on MetaMask. I have stored all of my liquidity tokens on MetaMask and I have changed the name of them on MetaMask to not read V2 token, but to read V2 parentheses PYR dash lava or Matic dash PYR. So I know exactly which one of those tokens each one is. Otherwise they all say V2 token and it can be a little bit confusing to remember which is which. They have highly different numbers suggestible. PYR and LAVA tokens do not equal what the MATIC and PYR tokens equal. So you need to keep track of which one is which. Based on how many numbers of the, of the actual coins inside the decks grows 
with fees and, and the price of those coins and, uh, it fluctuates. So the price of the liquidity token changes, the quantity of the liquidity token does not change, but the quantity of your coins inside the DEX will fluctuate over time. And it will fluctuate both up and down. I want to be very clear about this. Over time, you will be receiving fees based on the volume of trade in the specific pair of the coins that you have provided liquidity for. So if I provide liquidity in PYR and Lava, over time, people that come to the DEX to purchase Lava with PYR or purchase PYR by selling Lava, all of those transactions earn me a percentage of those fees. So, you know, I should just be getting more and more and more and more of each of my Lava and my PYR tokens. But that's not always the case. And I want to be very clear about this. There is something called impermanent loss at play. Impermanent loss is a fairly complicated idea, but I'm going to give you the most basic, basic concept of it that I can. Inside the Vulcan Dex, if you provide $1 of coin A and $1 of coin B, you are going to be able to stake those as an equal pair. Let's say coin A costs $1 per coin. So you've got one coin here. Coin B costs 10 cents per coin. So you've got 10 coins here. All of a sudden, coin A is going to go up in value. Coin A goes up in value and is now $2 a coin. So should you get two of coin A or should you get double of coin B? No, that's not unfortunately how it works you still get about the same value of each coin. So even though coin A is now $2, you don't have one full coin A anymore. I'm sorry to tell you. You now have maybe 0.7 coin A, and you have more than 10 of your coin B, because the relative value of the two coins needs to remain the same but the quantity of the two coins does not stay the same. So if one of your coins does really well and changes in value in relation to the coin that does not, you're going to end up with fewer of those coins and more of the coin that did not go up so much in value. The relative amount is going to stay the same, but the quantity is not. So that is a complicated, complicated subject that I just broke down very simplistically. So please don't leave comments of hate about how I got it wrong. But I want everyone watching this video to look for other YouTube videos with real experts that describe impermanent loss in a more specific way. All right. Lastly, I want to talk to you about something called farms. Now, I just ended up talking about impermanent loss and about how you can lose all your precious coins and I don't want to scare people away from providing liquidity because there is something to uh, assuade you from that risk and that is the farm. If you are willing to provide liquidity in a certain amount for a certain time, you could be rewarded for this and in the case of the Vulcan Dex, it is with a valuable NFT. So let's talk about farms. Farms are available usually on all of the trading pairs of the Vulcan Dex, historically all at the same time. And this might change in the future and it might stay the same. So for now, we are enjoying the fact that whether you own PYR and Matic uh, liquidity or whether you own wrapped Ethereum and PYR liquidity, you can still get in on virtually all the same farms as everyone else. So if you go to the main page and click on the far left and see the farms button, you can see exactly on the Polygon network, remember there's an Ethereum network as well. So on the Polygon network, there are four different pairings and each of those pairings currently has four different farms within them. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and click on the very first one, which is the Matic and PYR pairing. And instead of scrolling through all of them, here are two 
options. Um, you can see the very top option actually is for a level two Vulcanite, um, Alio. She's a Boreas Vulcanite, and this farm is currently still open, as you can see by my nice little red arrow there. It's open because it is um, not filled with participants yet. Um, maximum 25 and current 23 and also because the time limit has not hit so farms will close within a couple of days or when the number of participants reaches its maximum this farm in order to join shows you right up at the top that it requires 1080 of Vulcan v2 tokens remember I spoke earlier all of the liquidity tokens are called Vulcan V2 tokens. So these are specific to the Matic PYR liquidity tokens. You need 1,080 of them exactly to enter this farm. Um, on this slide, you can see I have insufficient Vulcan balance, and you can see I am nowhere near ready to get into this particular farm. If I was able to get into this particular farm and you forgot about, oh, did I get into that farm? I can't remember getting into that farm. There's a button right here called position details. You can click on the button of position details and it will show you magically what farms you are entered in. And it's a good reminder of um, exactly what farms you're in, where your tokens lie and when you'll be getting them back. Um, you can also see the farm for a Vulcan vs. God. It was open in January and it is closed for two months and filled very quickly with 20 participants. So Vulcan Forged offers some very nice NFTs as rewards for participating in their farms as long as you are willing to be there for a period of time. It's usually 30 days, it can be 60 days, it could be even 90 days if you are talking about the straight PYR reward farm that they just instituted for depositing PYR and Ethereum at the same time. Okay, lastly, I want to share that once you have participated in a Vulcan Forged Dex farm, those V2 tokens that you have are going to be locked in a smart contract for the duration of the farm. You're not going to have access to them. You're not going to be able to withdraw any of the liquidity that you have inside the farm. And most importantly, you're not going to be able to track any of the coin motions inside the farm. You basically won't see that liquidity at all. You'll get it, of course, as soon as the farm is over and you can withdraw your liquidity exactly at that time. But for live, uh, real-time accruing of fees, you're not gonna be able to see that. Okay, so this has been going over the Vulcan Dex farm. Uh, I hope you found it useful. And for all of you that are interested in selling your lava for real currency, please just use the first segment that I gone, went over with uh, selling lava for USDC. You can always find out exactly how much lava is worth on any given day by entering one lava coin and seeing the result pop up in the USDC window. And if you are interested in sending your lava to a MetaMask, you have to wait until you have 10,000 experience points inside of Vulcanverse before you are inside your MyForge wallet with Vulcanverse or Berserk before you can remove any of the lava that you've accrued. So you got to get back to foraging. You got to get back to experience runs. You got to get back to playing in the Tartarus game and Berserk and Forge Arena. All of those things are going to earn you experience points so you can get that lava. All right. Thanks for watching. This has been another Lumpy Land guide to Vulcan Forged. Hades smells funny.